So let's think about prayer tonight as offense and defense, okay? And if you are praying steadfastly, continually, and then an attack comes, instead of having your back already pinned against the wall, you're already positioned, standing firm in that midst of the valley and the hardship and ready to press onward. Does that make sense? So you're not then trying to make up ground. You've already been set and you're ready because you're steadfast in your prayers. So no matter what the enemy brings, you're ready for it. You're steadfast in it. So we must not give up in our prayers. We must not stop praying and we cannot forsake the mercy seat. If we do, it will be detrimental to our prayer life. Our prayers will remain powerless and ineffective. Now, I want to give you some examples of how I used to pray lazy, quick prayers, and how I've now adjusted, and I'm trying to pray steadfastly, okay? You might relate with this. Lord, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my girls. In general, those are pretty good prayers, right? We want to do that. But now I started to pray offensively and defensively for my family and for my girls. I pray that God would protect certain things in them and he would grow certain things in them. Over one of my girls, I pray that God would free her from the fear of man, that he would make her brave and confident. I'm continually praying that over her. And over one, I'm praying that there would be an abundance of the fear of the Lord in her life. And the obedience would be her way. And over another, I'm praying that she would be a vessel of truth all the days of her life. And for my home, I pray that it would be a refuge, a place that people find hope and are strengthened and encouraged when they come in and they visit with us. Prayers with purpose, specific. And maybe, I'm gonna get really vulnerable with you, maybe you're like me and you look at Psalm 3, if you love justice and you love righteousness, and you, and you might pray like King David, Lord, slap my enemies in the face. But now I pray, Lord, would you break my heart for the wicked? Father, would you fill me with your spirit that I would be strengthened to love my enemies, no matter the cost? Prayers with purpose. We must have purpose in the prayer. Purpose number two, being watchful in prayer. In the Greek, Watchful literally means to be awake. Paul's saying, don't fall asleep when you're praying. Keep awake. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is? It's weak. In Matthew 26, 36 through 45, it says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you, me, you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and he went away once more and prayed a third time saying the same thing. 
Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let's go. Here comes my betrayer. The disciples in this moment, unfortunately, were so carnally minded that they didn't realize how high the stakes were. But Jesus did, and that's why he said, stay awake with me and pray. And how many times do we go through the day and the only prayer that we've prayed at all is a dinner prayer? Or a prayer with our kids when we put them to sleep? Right? Because we can't see how high the stakes are. And this is why Paul tells us, stay awake. Be watchful. Growing physically too tired to pray is way too easy. But the time could be coming when you enter into great trial and we must be awake for each other. The stakes have never been higher. It's imperative that we're awake in our prayer. And asking for prayer should never be rare. This is not something to be embarrassed about. This is something that needs to be normalized in the church. When we ask at the end of services, like, hey, if you have something that you need prayer for, come forward. Right? A lot of times we go, I don't, I don't know if I really need prayer. I don't know if I really want prayer. Let me encourage you by telling you, you need it, and you need it all the time. You need to be covered in it. And we need to be watching and awake as we're praying for one another. All of us need it. Amen? Now, there's being physically awake in our prayers, and then there's being spiritually awake in our prayers. Being spiritually awake means that we are aware of the realities of darkness today in our culture. To see and understand the places the enemy is trying to infiltrate the church or disorient the believer. When we are spiritually awake, beloved, we are able to discern the times and we're able to see things for the evil that they are and then we're able to participate by praying appropriately with purpose. So what are some of the things today in our culture that we must be spiritually awake to? Abortion. It's not a political issue. It's a spiritual one. And as long as we are not spiritually awake to it, the enemy will continue to kill, steal, and destroy while we just sit back and say, it's not my fight. We must be spiritually awake. Identity. As if growing up wasn't hard enough already. The enemy has been assaulting our children with insecurities, with their purpose, their identity, and on top of that now it's their gender. Beloved, if we don't think it matters what they're being taught in the schools today, we're not spiritually awake. It matters. The battle has always been here. It's just gotten much darker. And truth itself is literally under attack. Listen, a lie doesn't become truth. And evil doesn't become good and wrong doesn't become right just because the majority accept it to be so. We have to be spiritually awake.